Hi. Hello, Alex. How are you? How are you, Janet? I'm really good. Pleased to be here. Right, guys. Um, today we have this lovely young lady with us, all the way from North London, by the name of Janet Ifiri. <laughs> Hello, Janet. everyone. Good Say to hi. See you. <laughs> Wave again, Janet. Say hi. Hello. Hello. Good to be here. Woo woo. Oh, we can see you. Wonderful. <laughs> so. Today, we, for the next 30 minutes, we'll be talking to Janet about what she does, how she helps to change people's lives, and how she helps businesses to, to get out there, okay? So Janet, we're going to start by asking, who are you? Who am I? Okay. Um, my name's Janet Affaire, as you said. I'm based in North London, and I set up Tadpole Training uh, nearly two years ago now. Partly because I was unemployable, and I'll come on to that later, I'm sure you'll ask me why. Um, but partly because I've got a passion for selling, and also I've worked for about 17 years in a college. So I understand about growing businesses and the relationship between growing businesses and sales. And I love training. And I realized that there's a lot of people out there, particularly entrepreneurs, who they're brilliant at what they do, absolutely outstanding in their field, but all entrepreneurs will find this familiar. You set up your own business and suddenly you're your own bookkeeper, you're the cleaner, you're the accountant, you have to do your own marketing and you have to sell. And if that doesn't come to you naturally, um, you need someone to help you because with the best will in the world, you've got no sales, you've got no business. I, I, I think that's a wake up call for a lot of businesses. Mm. When you step out of a nine to five job. Oh yes. And you know, someone's making the decisions for you. <laughs> yeah. And suddenly you've got to make that decision. Yes. Well, also you've got to get out there and generate the business because if you're in a job, you've got a team around you. There's someone you can ask if you're stuck. Um, there's a process already in place. Perhaps you've got a track record. Perhaps you've got existing customers. Suddenly you're on your own and literally you sticking your head above the parapet saying, hey, look at me, come and use me. And if you don't, uh, if you if you can't get that right, you're really going to struggle. And I, I, I think you're right. A wake up call is true. And I think that's why so many people find it so frightening to set up a business. And actually, um, you can achieve wonderful things working for yourself. I don't think I could ever go back to being an employee now. It is brilliant, but it's also frightening and stressful. And you sometimes wonder why you've done it but it actually is the best thing in the world. And when you're selling, coming back to what I do, you're helping other people. You're helping them solve a problem or achieve a goal. And what could be better than helping people and being paid to do it? Fabulous. No, I agree with you 100%. But why selling? Why sales? What got you there? Um, well, my background is Xerox. Um, I worked for seven years in direct sales in Xerox. Wonderful company. Uh, very interesting experience. It was tough. It was very target orientated, um, loads of training and some quite tough selling. We were always the most expensive. Every time you rang someone up, they'd go Xerox. No, I don't need a photocopier. So you have to really be quite tough because uh, it's not an easy sell and we could never sell on price. It had to be on quality and on value. And leaving Xerox, I realized what an amazing portfolio of skills I developed there and it really helped me within the college and um, it was a private college and we grew it from I think we had six students when I joined by the time um, it closed uh, in 2012 we had 650 wow. so my business development skills really really came to the fore um, but within Xerox it was very much a sales process I didn't get involved that much in the marketing and I didn't get any leads um, our bit of the business didn't have a direct link with the telesales so I was responsible for generating all of my leads and working on them and developing business and if you can create thousands of pounds of business and value for an employer why wouldn't you want to do that for yourself amazing but, but what is the difference then between sales and marketing a lot of people get that confused yeah um, marketing is the entire process of bringing something to market the right product at the right place at the right price um, and turning over a profit and within that you've got elements such as promotion which is where sales falls under but it's also about the people the process of delivery how you produce things um, getting the price right 
um, having the product or service in the first place. So in many ways, uh, it's almost like a triangle. Marketing is a triangle. And the final bit at the top of it is sales, which comes under promotion. You okay. can the interest through promoting what you do. So it could be flyers, advertising, social media, anything like that, networking. But sales is the bit where you turn interest into cold hard cash, if you like. Hey, well, selling, that, that's, what, that's what matters, really, isn't it? That's what matters. Well, money makes the world go around. It's true. And <laughs> I know, Alex, you, you've been to um, a few networking events with me, and I often say this, but I believe it. If your business is not turning over money, it's not a business. It's a hobby. My. So do you believe there's a lot of businesses that are still hobbies? I come across a lot, yes. Now, that's... That's not to say that there's not value in doing something that you get a lot of satisfaction from or perhaps you're doing it as a second income for the family. Absolutely not, because there's space for everybody. But if you're serious about earning a living from your business, you've got to focus on the bottom end, and that is bringing in money. So how do you transition something that you, you've loved so much, you're passionate about it, you transition it from just being a hobby, something you do, to something yeah. that's making you money. How do you make that transition? Um, well, funny enough, it, this doesn't really come under the sales hat. This comes under um, the marketing hat. So for example, are you charging enough to make a margin on it? It could be something as simple as raising your prices and you turn a profit. Um, it could be that you haven't identified who your market is yet. If, if your market appeals to um, young men in their 20s and you're marketing it at ladies in their 50s, you're not going to be successful. So you need to understand who your, your market is, who your niche is. Perhaps you're not promoting it properly. Maybe you're not um, advertising in the right newspapers or, um, or publications. Um, you're a speaker. Well, you're going to advertise in places where people might need speakers, not in very niche magazines. Oh, I don't know, for giant African racing snail specialists, for example. <laughs> so you'll find something that's appropriate to your market. You've got to be serious. There's a lot of research. Um, I'm sure you've seen the analogy of the iceberg. It looks great on the surface, but underneath, 90% of it is panic, chaos, hard work, uncertainty, things going wrong and sorting out problems. And that's what running a business is like. But you've got to try and get the basics right. Otherwise, no one's going to want it. It doesn't matter how good it is. No one's going to want it. No, that, 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 no you, you, you've got you, That's true. Now, you, you run a, um, a course, a program called I'm Not a Salesperson. Now, the first time I heard that title, I was fascinated. I'm not a salesperson. So uh, <laughs> if I'm not a salesperson, then what am I? <laughs> well, you're right. You're a business owner. You're not naturally a salesperson, which is why you might be interested in my course. You probably don't really want to be a salesperson. You want to do the thing that you do the best, whether it's making cakes or selling cars or, or whatever your, your passion is, whatever the main thing is that prompted you to set up your business. You don't really want to be a salesperson, but while you're starting off, You've got to be, like I said, you're, you're an accountant, you're a marketer, you're own cleaner. To start with, you need to be able to sell so that you can take your business to the next level where hopefully you can employ people to do the tasks that don't come naturally to you. But if you can't get over that initial stage, that's why a lot of businesses fail to thrive and fail to grow and fail to develop onto the next stage. It's something you need to know. Well, let's, let's, let's think about Richard Branson for, for a second. Yeah. Because yeah. Richard Branson does not come across as a salesperson. No, he doesn't, because I think people's idea of a salesperson is the cliche. It's someone pushy, someone who lies to you, someone who doesn't stop talking, someone who doesn't care about you, just cares about them, get their foot in the door, you can never get rid of them. Now, Richard Branson is smart. He is likable. He understands about delivering value to customers. He understands it's about taking away their pain or solving a problem or giving them something aspirational. Um, take Virgin Trains. Well, what he realized was if you provide a good service at a reasonable price, people are probably going to use it. And actually, that's all you really are doing in selling. You're helping people take away their pain or solve a problem. And do you know what? If you can be nice and show that you genuinely care about about them, not about you, you're not important at all. The customer is everything. The customer's 100%. What do they want? Can you deliver the thing they want? And if you can, do you know what? Selling is a joy because you're taking pain away or you're helping them achieve a goal. 
So what you're saying then is that we we have we have in our heads uh, um, a memory of selling as a door-to-door -door salesman then. Certainly, yeah. Um, I mean, the modern equivalent is the people who maybe call up, try and sell you PPI, and they'll kick off by saying, um, oh, I don't know, um, you know, hello, how are you today? And straight away, you know they're trying to sell you something. You know it's not genuine. They don't care how you are. They're just trying to flog something. Or um, the people who ring you up and say, I'm calling about your car crash. You know you haven't had a car crash. Straight away, they're lying. There's no trust. Why should you trust them? They're just trying to earn their commission. And yeah, you know, I think like that too. Um, it's a normal human reaction. But if someone came along and you met them, particularly say in a networking event, and you get chatting, oh, I don't know about what your kids do, and you know what sort of dog you've got, and what your hobbies are, and get on to what you're talking about in business, you have a connection. Ah, oh, I like that person. I wonder if I can work with that person. And often it's about giving something first. Um, if I can give some free information, some free knowledge to someone that helps them do something, do you know what they might use me? They might not, but I don't care because I've helped someone. And I often get people I've spoken to maybe a year, two years ago, come back and say, oh, Janet, you know that thing you told me? It really helped. I'd like to do one of your courses. So yeah. I don't have an agenda, but I genuinely enjoy helping people. And once you help people, they know that you're someone they can trust because you're thinking of them, not yourself. So have you seen people make that transition then on, you know, through working with you, they make that transition coming on your course and yeah. then suddenly it clicks and they realize what they've got to do? Oh, absolutely. Um, one lady came on my program and we were doing a session on what questions to ask customers. And she toddled off during the tea break, came back. Janet, you'll never guess what's happened. I tried that question. I don't even know what question it was. I tried that question you told me to ask, and I'd never normally do that. I'd ask something else, but I believed you, and I tried it, and I got a deal. Now, that's wonderful, because you can't anticipate things like that happening. So sometimes, yes, it can be that quick. Sometimes it takes more time. Um, there's another lady who works... Um, as a, a sort of independent and a franchise type scheme and she came on my course about nine months ago and she's increased her turnover by 180 percent and wow. I didn't even know that I was just asking her if she'd be kind enough to do a case study and it wasn't until we went through the figures I realized what difference it had made and she genuinely attribute it to me you know I'm, I'm not crazy there's other factors <laughs> that's fantastic results it's a joy absolute joy that is fantastic results mm. Yeah, well, it's wonderful for her. Sorry? It's absolutely wonderful for her, and it makes it worthwhile for me because I know I'm giving something of value that other people are getting, they're understanding it, and they're using it, and they're applying it in their lives. It's made a huge difference to her. She's earning money she didn't think she would earn. Um, she's one of their top um, leaders now, um, and the future's looking amazing. And I know that somewhere down the line she'll probably recommend people to me, but that's not why I did it. I did it because that's what I enjoy doing, and it's helped her. Wow. So what you're saying then is that you know when you start to, in business um, uh, as a small business, even a big business, that your focus has got to be on you called it the bottom line, and selling yeah. gets you to the bottom line. It does, um, but. I would slightly qualify that. Yes, you need to earn a living. We all have to put food on the table. But where you will genuinely be successful is where you can create value and give it to other people. Um, it's no point just selling apples. You've got to meet a need. If you have a customer who is hungry and they want to eat an apple, you are fulfilling their need for food because they're hungry. Does that make sense? It's not just enough to say, look here, I, I have lots of apples, aren't they lovely? No, the apples will make you feel good because they will satisfy your hunger. Oh, and by the way, they're healthy. That's value. People need to understand the benefits of what you're doing. And uh, I guess that's the bit I like as so well. When you, say, when you say creating value, what do you mean by creating value? Well, what you offer has to be worth more than the money they're going to pay for it, in very simple terms. So is it worth more to you to have £100 in your pocket or is it worth more to you to do some coaching that might deliver you £10,000 worth of income? And obviously, right. you're going to choose the 10000 but you're a customer and you don't understand how I can do that. So I have to show you through proving it and through gaining your trust that that's a tangible thing that you could achieve. 
because otherwise I'm just someone who's saying something nice to persuade you to part with your money. That's not something that's actually being um, very disingenuous and misleading people. You've got to genuinely be able to do the thing you do. If I pay for um, a garage to replace my tyre, I expect them to replace my tyre. I don't expect them to take off my tyre and put a cardboard box on there. That's not value. But a tyre is. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> now, I'm sure you, you won't go far in the cardboard box at all. That's amazing. No. <laughs> so um, if, if I get you right, then you're creating value. You're giving more, yeah. much more than the money you're receiving. And so the recipient of <laughs> that value, they, they see what you're offering them. Well, they should do, yes. And I, I think... If you're serious about being an exceptional business, you have to give more than people expect. So if I promise that for your money, in return, I'm going to give you something, what if I can give you a bit more? So you pay me the money, you're going to have A, B, and C. Well, maybe I can give you something else. I can give you D, E, and F as well, which makes it even better. And this, this could be simple things. It could be, I'm going to deliver it in two days, and you deliver it in one day. It could be um, that you order 10 and you receive 11. It doesn't have to be big or complicated. It could be a follow-up phone call to make sure that everything's okay when they didn't expect it. It could be absolutely anything like that, or a free resource on Facebook. You can be quite creative. As a small business, you haven't got to follow rules. You haven't got to do um, what a big company does, which is get it ticked off and get it checked off at board level and then go through several different levels. You're fast. You're, um, you're very fluid. That's my daughter in the cupboard. Sorry. <laughs> um, but you're fast. You're flexible. You can turn on the sixpence. And you should use that to your advantage because big companies can't do that. And where they may have more money than you um, and more resources, you have flexibility, you have speed, and you have passion. And you can use that because you can really focus on your customer. Okay. So we've, we've, in the last two, three, three, four years, we've been coming through one of the most um, difficult times in terms of trading, mm. in terms of, but yet still there's record levels of businesses starting up. Why yes. is that? Within training, you mean? Within training, within, within consulting, all different areas. I think people really are hungry for knowledge. They can see people succeeding. And why should you work hard, 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 hard and not get anything for it when you can work a bit smarter, still work as hard, but work smarter and get big results? And I'm sure, like me, you've seen lots of people putting um, ads up. Uh, I can teach you how to earn six figures. I can teach you how to earn seven figures. Most of us need a bit of a toolkit. And I do think that particularly in the last few years with the absolute explosion of social media, there are opportunities open to ordinary people that there weren't uh, five or ten years ago. Um, for example, I talked about when I worked in a college. Um, we really didn't utilize social media whatsoever. And that was an organization that closed in um, 2012. The, the landscape in business has completely changed. It's very equitable. You can have a good idea and a laptop and you can be extremely successful but you need to have a story and you need to have a knowledge and you need to identify which people would benefit from that. I don't think um, a recession is necessarily um, a deterrent to small businesses for what I was saying before they're small they're flexible lots of people can set up businesses from home if you don't have a great big premises and lots of staff and lots of overheads you're in a much stronger position during a recession so I, I think it's really exciting it's a good place to be right now so all I need is is one good idea but how do I know it's a good idea how, how do I know that this is going to take off you know there's no guarantees no, well, there's no guarantees in anything, is there? Uh, you do have to believe in what you do. Um, I did do quite a lot of research before I started, and it might not sound very exciting, but it is important. I would also say if something, if your idea is something that matters to you and is important to you and can help you in your life some way, the chances are that there's somebody else out there who feels the same. So you've got to try and find like-minded people with the same pain or the same problem or the same objective. And if you can find those people, they will be interested in what you offer. And it can be terribly niche now, really, really niche. Um, oh, I don't know. You could organize 
um, singles trips for Jewish people to the Egyptian pyramids. There will be a niche of people that are interested in that. Um, you could do fly fishing trips to Ghana. There will be people who are interested in that. Um, so if you can find out the group of people who are interested, you can target them very specifically and offer them something that's a bigger company, perhaps being broader. Right. Not, that, it would be, that is where the value comes in. That's what I was because you use the word niche, and just yeah. in case the audience doesn't quite understand what you mean, can you just yeah. if you find what you mean by niche? Yeah, of course. Um, well, for example, if you're a marketer, if you do marketing and that's your job, then you could argue that almost every company in the world will need your services. So perhaps you'll be a bit more specialist. Perhaps you'll focus on search engine optimization because that's a niche area of marketing and perhaps other people are using a marketer already who's not a specialist in that. So you can nip in and do that a little bit for them, which is what they need. Um, you might get a different marketer whose niche is producing brochures. You might get a different marketer whose niche is sales. So don't forget, technically I'm a marketer because sales comes within, within marketing. So it's breaking down the big subject into tiny chunks where you can find the thing that you, you can do really well and you can deliver better than someone who's very general. Amazing, amazing. Well, Janet, you know, it's been amazing talking to you awesome. and just hearing, you know, the passion that you have for this, for this area and this subject and this, the training that you do. What's the name of your company? It's Tadpole Training. Here we are. <laughs> well, that looks exciting. <laughs> well, tadpole, it's, um, it's a great metaphor, actually, if you think about it. It's uh, a good metaphor for growth. And I promise not to turn you all into frogs. I've had that one before. But it is a good metaphor for growth and for change. And do you know what? If I could, if I could wave, wave a magic wand, I'd just help everybody not be scared of selling and just go out there, give it a crack, and just bring in more business. It would be super. Well, that, 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 that's a great heart you've got there for helping, helping small businesses, bringing more business, and as you said, we with social media, we're as big as we want to make it these days. That's true. That's true. So what's the what's we've, we've covered a lot of ground today. We've covered, you know, why you need to be able to sell, why you need to be able to focus the business on a particular niche, how to get out there. Now, what are the three best things that are the three piece of advice that you can give the public today about? I'm not a salesperson. What's the three bits of advice you could give? Right, first one, two ears, one mouth, use them in that proportion. <laughs> Who's talking to you, ask them questions and listen to what they have to say. They should be talking more than you. Remember what I said, it's about them and not you. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing, uh, this is something I teach on my course. You need to speak to the man. Now, that is not an outdated sexist concept. The man is the person who has money, authority, and need. I didn't mean to make a rude sign. I'll do it with my thumb next time. Money, authority, and need. The money to pay for whatever it is, the authority to say yes to it, and the need or requirement for it. Wow. So say that again. No, that, that's interesting. Say that again. Money, authority, need. I'm going to do the fingers correctly this time. The money to pay for the goods or service, the authority to say, yes, I want to go ahead, and the need for it. So in other words, it's something that helps them solve a problem, take some pain away, or achieve an objective. So That's always talk to the man. Always ask for the man, although that might confuse people. But in <laughs> your head, always, try, always think man. It's a really simple little acronym, and it does help. Uh, and I think the third thing I would say is ask for the sale. When you've had that nice chat, sometimes there's a difficult bit at the end and you're not quite sure what to do next. Just ask for the sale. Is that something you're interested in? Do you want to go ahead? Do you want the red one or the blue one? Just ask for the sale. Um, even professional sales can be a bit rubbish asking for the sale. I think the statistics show that even professionals only ask for the sale about 1.8 times on average. So if you can ask for the sale two or three times, because sometimes customers say no, um, then you'll increase your chances. If they do say no, all it means is they need a bit more information. So ask them, 
what's the problem? Um, what haven't I explained? Try and address it and then ask again. Um, so are, you, are you telling me that people have a conversation yeah. um, about the product and at the end don't ask for the sale? Even professional salespeople. That, that, is, that is amazing. That is amazing. So yeah. if, if professional salespeople are doing that, much less small businesses who are yeah. scared. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So you're spending loads of time having lots of conversations with people. Uh, and I, as a salesperson, I can recognize in myself when I'm ready to buy something. And I get very frustrated when the other person doesn't just say, hey, Janet, do you want to go ahead? Because I'm sitting there thinking, yes, I do. But I'm not going to give it to you. I want you to ask me. So, um, so, so yeah. what you're saying, to cut through all the everything else, <laughs> just to get straight to the point, yeah. just open your mouth and say what? Yeah, um, how does that sound? Would you like to go ahead? How does that sound? Would you like to go ahead? Yeah, or right. um, shall we progress? Or how many would you like to order? There's lots of different ways of closing. So um, I'm not here to push my course, but it's something I can teach you. But there's lots of different ways. Um, a nice gentle one is um, what we call a trial close, which is how does that sound to you? And if they go, yeah, it sounds good. They are ready to buy, so ask them. If they say, not quite sure yet, ask them what they're not sure about, try and address it, and then have another go. Does that sound better now? Shall we go ahead? Wow. Janet, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Been a, it's, you've got so much information, so much insight into um, developing the business from the selling point of view yeah. and, and just getting out there and asking for the sell. I want to thank you very much for joining master your message oh, and, it's been a pleasure, Alex. thank you so much well you know as a bonus just give us your your website domain that people can find you yeah it's tadpoletraining.com i'm on linkedin um i'm the only janet ferre so you should be able to find me please you're very welcome and you're very welcome to join me on facebook as well if you've got any questions pop them down i'll be delighted to answer them thank you very much janet guys that's Janet Afferi from Tadpole Training talking to us today about I'm not a salesperson. And we can recommend that, you know, it's important for every small business, every medium sized business, and even every big business just to get to terms with how they get their product into the hands of their audience every week, every day of the year. And sometimes just ask for the sale. I mean, I find that amazing to have a discussion and not ask for the sale. So, Janet, I'm going to give you one last word. Okay. Please go out there, enjoy your business, but get what you deserve, earn some money, and get a bit better at selling. Okay. Thank you, Janet. Guys, right. go out there, make some Thank money, you. and when you make some money, come and find Janet Afiri and Alex Gordon from Master Your Message. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you again. Bye.